Saints running back Alvin Kamara, after a long ordeal, has now pled down to a no contest charge. Will await suspension from the NFL. What will that look like for Kamara? What will it look like for the Saints offense at running back? And the New York Jets on hard knocks with Aaron Rodgers, which should be very interesting. Scheme and quarterback change, all that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We appreciate all of the everydayers. You can be an everydayer. Just subscribe up on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. Okay, Matt. Um, one, one of the big topics we've got today is how few teams in the NFL actually have the same quarterback and scheme that they started yeah. last year with. And, and it's mind blowing. We know there's a lot of change every year, but uh, so much has changed. And how much an advantage is that for some of those teams that have the same quarterback and the scheme from the year before? Uh, but first, some news. And it starts with Alvin Kamara. And, and I want to make sure I get the legal part of this right. This this from uh, Kathleen Terrell, who is the Saints reporter for ESPN. Uh, so Alvin Kamara agrees to plead no contest to a lesser charge from uh, an incident incident that that he has been dealing with for for quite some time now. And there's been sort of a looming idea that he might be suspended by the league. Uh, his trial was previously scheduled for July for 31st this year. So now he finally you know pleads down to that lesser charge. Now officially no trial that has been canceled and uh, he has a status check, whatever that means on October 12th to make sure he's complied with all the terms of whatever the plea deal is. He's going to have, you know, uh, community service and um, some medical payments and some other things like that. Um, so, and it was the a misdemeanor charge of breach of peace for his involvement in hmm. a, a fight from 2022 is, is what's happening here for Alvin Kamara. So, that is the charge now. It was felony charges uh, that he doing bodily harm, charges of battery with substantial bodily, bodily harm was the charge that he was going to be faced with. It was a Las Vegas fight in 2020. Is it, it a Pro Bowl, wasn't it? Is that what it was? I thought so, yeah. Yeah, it was some um, event, I thought. Right. So anyway, uh, that's where Alvin Kamara is now. Matt, do you think this matters to the league? And do you think this, it obviously helps his legal standing, but does this help him with the league and maybe get a lesser suspension or maybe no suspension. Whereas he could have had a, a more lengthy suspension and miss more time for the saints. Otherwise. Well, I think there's, it's definitely good news. It might not change his suspension whatsoever. I mean, obviously there's massive fantasy implications and all these fantasy sites and people I follow. Most of them thought this looked like a six game suspension. When you were reading that, I hadn't thought of it. Not that it's a big deal for someone that's, you know, better on the block like Alvin Kamara, but he now doesn't have a trial right in the middle of training camp either. I mean, it's just one less distraction, you know, practices missed, things like that won't be an issue. So if it was going to be six, if he was found guilty for a worse, you know, uh, charge. Felony. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're guilty for a felony battery and you have a trial during camp. I mean, that almost derails your whole season because who knows when the right. trial's going to end. And then they, you know, there's different lists the league could put you in. So this is a no brainer for, Alvin Kamara to plead down to a misdemeanor instead and not have this happening and hanging over his head during training camp and go through a normal camp and then find out what the league wants to do. Yeah. yeah. So we know the league does whatever they want. I mean, they honestly don't, well, they care, but they have their own set of laws, their own set of rules. Maybe they'll give them six games anyway and say, you're just as guilty now as you were before. And we know it, you know, we, we've done our share of background. It's still going to be six, no matter what you did in the courts. But if anything, it's less, you know what I mean? It's less distraction. Maybe they say three, maybe they say four. He can also appeal it after that and say, you know, hey, why don't you bump a game down? And sometimes they do that. So I think it's good news. And, you know, they drafted Kendra Miller in the third round. Jamal Williams is a quality back that's going to be in the mix. And every coach loves them. Every fantasy owner hates them if they don't have them, you know. So their backfield's in pretty good shape to me. 
And, and the other thing that could happen is the league says, okay, six games, and then, you know, Alvin Kamara and, and his people challenge that, right? And right, right. feel that, and he says, look, the only reason I pled down was because I didn't want all this other stuff to happen. I, here's the evidence. I was completely innocent. I was, you know, self-defense or whatever he'll say, mm -hmm. but I just had to get this over with so it wasn't happening during training camp, and then maybe he gets a knockdown to four games or something maybe. like that. Right, right, right. Um, I would not be shocked if he misses time. It's clearly not going to be more than six games. I think if you if you're kind of reading right. the teams here, and it could be Maybe, zero yeah. games, could be two games, could be four games. Who knows? Yeah, I think it's good news if you own Kamara in fantasy, or if you're a Saints fan, it's definitely not a negative. You know. And listening to Ross Jackson of Locked On Saints, who by the way filled in nicely for Mr. Williamson while Williamson was on vacation, we had a nice little conversation about the mm -hmm. Saints, and uh, he he was talking about the running back situation. And I think life after Alvin Kamara beyond the first six games this year was already something in the works for the new Orleans saints. He's an expensive running back. Um, you know, he's late twenties, which is, you know, ancient for NFL running back these days. And they brought in Jamal Williams this off season. He have 17 touchdowns last year. So clearly that was a pairing of Alvin Kamara. You know, he's more of a slim uh, non bell cow do a lot in the passing game running back. And then we can bring in someone like Jamal Williams is really good in the red zone, short yardage back, perfect pairing there, you know, with Alvin Kamara getting the, the much larger share of carries when he's in there. But they did something else. Interesting. They brought in another running back as well in Kendra Miller, third round running back. Who's got a ton of speed, really good in the passing game and can kind of fill in in the meantime, in the Alvin Kamara role, and then we'll see what maybe life looks like after Alvin Kamara for the New Orleans Saints to start this year if Kamara is suspended there and obviously probably more of a, a timeshare there or more of a larger portion going to Jamal Williams and then Kendra Miller being more of a, a passing down back and a sub back while Kamara is out. So shifting that, you know, that that share of carries to Jamal Williams earlier in the year. Yeah, and I think it's a good situation. I mean, it's a a lot of different styles. There's a young guy to learn from a real professional in Williams. Kamara has been a workhorse. No matter what, I think his load gets lightened and maybe wild card round in the playoffs. He's fresh as can be and he gets 30 touches. You know what I mean? And yep. I, I just pulled up draft history because that's a historically good running back draft class. And I, I didn't remember that Jamal Williams was also part of Kamara's class, but this is, you know, the end of the road for those guys. That was 2017. Some of the star, some of the notables that aren't, you know, whose futures are uncertain is Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Mixon. I think is safe for this year, but who knows? Kareem Hunt. You know, I mean, Tariq Cohen's already out of the league. So, 2017 is quite a while ago in running back years. I mean, speaking to someone who's dealt with, um, you know, stuff off the field, Kareem Hunt, he's still not signed to a roster right now. Right, right, right. Same with Cook, and you know, right. Yeah, yeah. and Cook has talked about how he's going to wait until maybe see how things look in camp and maybe sign a little bit late. He probably wants to avoid uh, some of those early dog days of training camp and see if there's any injuries that help him get a better job than he would right now. So mm -hmm. I think that is smart. I don't know if that's necessarily what's happening with Kareem Hunt, but you know, they both have enough gas in the tank for you know a, a couple more seasons. But you know, it's it's. This is the whole running back thing. It's the beginning of the end at this point for guys that were drafted in just 2017 and some other positions. Quarterbacks are, you know, just beginning their prime that were drafted. Right, right, right. That's 2017 is a long time ago in running back years. <laughs> All right, next. How excited is Matt Williamson to watch the New York Jets on hard knocks and uh, a conversation about quarterback and scheme change and turnover in the NFL? There's a lot every year, but it might surprise you how few teams have the same scheme and the same quarterback. That starts 2023 that started 2022 next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by our newest sponsor, eBay Motors. Super excited about eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for your draft or you're scouting the waiver wire midseason, every week we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed fits for your roster. It's all about that guaranteed fit. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked for us uh, on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the week. And if you're drafting early in round one, but maybe you don't have the first pick in your draft, or maybe you want to go away from running back with the first pick in your fantasy draft, there's nobody safer, nobody better 
than wide receiver Justin Jefferson. When you're on the clock early, it's okay to get downright giddy about doing the gritty. Uh, <laughs> that move picking Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson, it's a guaranteed fit. Over the past two seasons, Jefferson led the league in both receptions and receiving yards. He will remain a dominant number one and target monster. And by the way, the Vikings might throw the ball even more with a worse defense coming into the year, at least on paper. And Jefferson is a guaranteed fit to ignite the rest of your fantasy football lineup toward winning success. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay guaranteed fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, tail lights, alternators, shock struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for you for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go with eBay's Guaranteed Fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check, get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Robert Sala, Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson, the New York Jets uh, in prime time on hard knocks. What do you think about the New York Jets on hard knocks? Do you think this is a, a, a the right choice by the NFL and this is something you're excited to tune into, Matt? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is such an odd fella, and I don't mean that good, bad, ugly. I mean, I think that he will be very aware of his persona and seems to be already in New York, you know, that – it by I mean that's a second third hand information, but it didn't sound like he was overzealous to work with his his receivers in Green Bay last year. The young guys, you know, this time of year where it's total opposite now with the, the Jets. He's reborn, and him and Garrett Wilson are best buds, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe all that's true. Hope it is, you know, because they could be really really good together. But I'm sure that's what we'll see. You know, boy, I'm learning from Rogers. New, new, what a positive environment, and that's certainly possible. I'm not manufacturing that but i'm also really intrigued with you know last year's awesome rookie class you know Brees hall wilson sauce all those type of dudes i mean i think will be interesting mckay beckton's an interesting guy you know at this stage of his career quinn and williams i'll definitely be scouting how Brees hall is moving around at yeah camp. Even if he's doing things on the side whatever it is coming back from that acl uh that that's going to be a huge storyline for the jet season and i wonder how much they'll focus on that on hard knocks but clearly the two quarterbacks i mean aaron Rodgers is going to say something and and for the league, this is a home run, right? They get a Hall right. of Fame quarterback, someone who's already been a ton in the news in Aaron Rodgers and the New York market. I mean, this is a no-brainer for them. So um, we'll see what it ends up looking like. And if anything interesting happens, we'll be talking about it here on Peacock and Williamson. But, um, you know, just hearing Zach Wilson, who's already put his foot in his mouth a couple times as a young player, I'm sure they're going to really pump that angle of it. And a lot of Rodgers and a lot of Wilson. So we'll see where where they're at with New York and uh, in this new look Jets team in 2023. Did you hear the other show news real quick? I apologize. My son told me about it yesterday. I think it airs tomorrow on Netflix. There's a show called Quarterbacks where they're going to follow. It's they they followed Marcus Mariota, Kirk Cousins, and Pat Mahomes, like behind the scenes, what what their life is like at home, all that stuff. So another little nugget that could be interesting to watch. You know, in the down times, a lot of great programming here during the uh, yeah about that. So. Yeah, so anyway, uh, Hard Knocks can be a lot of fun to watch. Probably not great for the Jets, another distraction. You're already in New York, new quarterback and Aaron Rodgers, so a lot of cameras and a lot of faces there in New York. Let's see if if Robert Sala can keep the whole group together. That'll be a huge key for them. No doubt. Uh, Think about keeping things together, Matt. Yeah, yeah. You've got some numbers here on on how many quarterbacks are new or how many new quarterback starters are starting for their team in week one in 2023 versus – that same team in 2022 and there's been a ton of coaching changes a ton of scheme changes even if the head coach stayed there's been new offensive coordinators brought into teams so what are those numbers like and and what can we take away from that this year Matt 
So a quick little tease probably for a future show, and I think people probably know this, but maybe not to the degree. Scoring was way down last year. I mean, touchdown score, everything was way down last year. So as a result, quick math, there are 32 NFL teams. I think our listeners know that by now. Mm -hmm. 16 of them, that's half, is going to, they're going to have a new offensive play caller. Like Dallas, for example, that used to be the coordinator, now it's going to be the head coach. You know, like somebody different is calling plays. It, it, it doesn't matter that they fired someone, hired somebody, but whatever. Half of the league is going to have a new human being calling plays on offense. And I was listening to the Move the Six podcast, Bucky and DJ, and they threw this out there, which made me, you know, correlate the two that 14 teams will have a different starting week one quarterback than they had last year. So to take that further, Rodgers counts. You know, the Jets are going to have a new starting quarterback. You know, just because he started in Green Bay, eight, the, one of the 32, the, the 32 teams are going to have 14 new starters. So Green Bay's one and the Jets are one by that move. You know, same correlation the Raiders and Saints both count because Carr goes from Vegas to New Orleans. You know, um, for example, Trubisky started for the Steelers. You know, Pickett's coming back, but he wasn't the opening day starter. Washington's a different one. You know, so 14 teams out of 32 are going to have a different week one starter. So it made me think there must not be many that have the same play caller and the same quarterback. And so I kind of dug up a list, and it's a short one. And I think it's a huge advantage to the teams that have it. So what, we'll get into what those teams are and the specifics there. So how many teams have the same quarterback and scheme to start 2023 than they had to start 2022? This was off the top of my head, so if I missed one, please tweet me and at me or whatever. I came up with a dozen. So in the AFC, all the division champs, which all play each other this year, we got Jacksonville, of course, Kansas City. Cincy and Buffalo, as well as the Dolphins. You know, they're going to have Tua and they're going to have, you know, McDaniel. So only five in the entire AFC are bringing in the super competitive, you know, division or conference with awesome quarterbacks everywhere. You know, Herbert's not going to have the same guy, you know, I mean, so only five there. And I came up with seven in the NFC, the Eagles, the Giants and Bears, which are kind of interesting in that. Mm. They might be a year ahead of some of these teams in terms of, you know, they did this last year. They suffered through the growing pain last year. The Vikings will have the same one. Detroit, Seattle, although at this stage we didn't know it was going to be Geno, but Geno was the opening day starter. Yeah. And the Rams, assuming Stafford starts week one. And some of these are assumptions. I mean, if somebody gets hurt between now and week one, if Kirk Cousins gets hurt, well, they going to have other, you know, the presumed starters, you know right, what I right. mean? And even so there's some, only a dozen, the, the 49ers could end up starting Trey Lance, but he's kind of not the guy. And he only played a right. game and a half last year. He could play one game this year, start week one, but Brock Purdy's kind of the starter, but we still don't know what the timing is going to be there with him coming back. But they basically said that, Brock, when he's healthy, he's going to be the guy for the 49ers. So they so might I have didn't count them, them but right. Yeah, I wouldn't you know count I mean? them either because for this exercise, they, they, they shouldn't really count, even if they it ends right. up being Trey Lance at this point. Um, so next, I want to go through some of those teams, Matt. And before and, we do, I want to throw one yeah. thing out there because you yeah. did throw out the Niner example. So Lance is still with the team. Maybe he starts. Purdy was with the team, at least, even if he wasn't the opening day starter. But I also found it interesting that Atlanta, Pittsburgh, and the Packers had a guy there in camp, at least, who either took it over last year in Ritter and Pickett or now is. So they're not a total fresh face. So I give them a little bit extra credit. You know, there is familiarity there, you know. Yeah, a little a little more continuity with those teams, yeah. even though it's not the starter in week one. It's a guy that they believe in. And, and in, in some of these cases – a better starter for some of these teams. So it's not a negative right, right, right. thing at all, which at first, when you first brought this up, I thought, okay, That's that means terrible, there's 11 right. good teams and the rest of them are kind of in trouble or, or, or crossing their fingers a little bit, but that might not exactly be the case. So let's go a little bit deeper into this. Yep. Yes. And, and then the last one, sorry, yeah. yes, Cleveland. Sir. I didn't count Cleveland because Brissett started 
And Watson was not there at camp. He was suspended. It's different than Pickett or Love, who's at least in the meeting rooms. No, he's at home in the bad boy chair. You know, like he wasn't able to participate, you know. <laughs> That's, a good one. That's a good one. Okay, yeah. No, that, that, that is <laughs> All right, Let's get a little bit deeper into this. Quarterback scheme change next. Thanks once again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Please subscribe up to the new Peacock and Williamson YouTube channel. We're trying to grow that one. Uh, Hit the notification bell so you know when we go live, as we will this Thursday for another mailbag. Hit the thumbs up and all that. And, of course, you can find us everywhere you find your podcasts. All right, so um, give me those 11, was it 11 teams or 12 teams that have the same quarterback scheme to start 2023? 12. Five in the AFC, seven in the NFC. Okay, so looking at the AFC, those five are five of the best teams in the AFC. Yeah, Miami and the division leaders. Right, yeah, exactly. So that kind of holds true as I think if you ask any coach, any owner, they want to have the same starting quarterback in the same scheme. For yeah. back-to-back years. That's a that's a helpful thing, right? So it's not a surprise that most of those are, are good teams and good situations that have the same starting quarterback and the same uh, scheme going into the next year. And uh, in the NFC, there was a lot of good teams there, too. You named the, the Philadelphia Eagles. You named the... Lions. Lions Seattle. Yeah. You know. Seattle. Playoff yeah, yeah, yeah. Teams or close to playoff teams with Vikings. obvious playoff aspirations this year. Yeah. But it's a kind of a different feel in the NFC. I mean, it's the Giants and Bears, you know, that maybe got ahead of this a year before some of the competition, you know, like Houston or some of those teams, you know. And it's funny because we've talked about the the Giants and the Vikings specifically, who are teams with the same quarterback and scheme coming into the year, as teams that we're kind of down on, that maybe could mm-hmm. – disappoint versus what is expected of them or, or might not be as good as they were last year, or at least not a lot better than they were last year uh, in the giants case, trying to take that next step. So that's interesting because maybe are we sleeping on those teams versus all the change that's happening in the NFL should right. we count that stronger and say, man, you know what? The actual sleepers in the NFC might be the bears and the giants and the Vikings because they have that continuity year year. I really think it's a feather in their cap. I mean, especially for first month of the season, you know, if you're a better or you're looking at over under win totals, maybe they come out of the gates much, much more familiar with one another and win games that they quote shouldn't have, or would have been tougher if you don't have that continuity. I mean, I think it's really important. And, you know, I'm it's, it's right around the corner. I'm going to be living in Latrobe PA basically And when you see it every day, you realize, man, I watch every practice leading up to the preseason. I watch all the preseason games, report to practice after that. It's not that much time. I mean, it really isn't. It's one practice a day. Two days aren't a thing anymore. Of course, there's a lot of board time and after hours and all that. But that's an awful lot of time to get ready for an NFL defense in week one when the play caller and the quarterback just aren't as familiar with, you know, one another and I wonder if you really go back, how many even have more than like two or three years? Because, oh, you know what? I, I got to scratch one. The Eagles are wrong. I just assumed the Eagles were a one, but they they traded their, or they, right, no, their yeah. offensive coordinators are gone. So I thought the 11 was the number. So that was the 12. I did have 11 original. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know why yep. I didn't pick up on that immediately, but you know. Yep. The, the, uh, uh, you know, an offensive head coach. And so there's still some continuity there. We'll see what the, yeah, the, yeah. it ends up looking like for them on offense. Um, but it could be like, just like we said, it could be the opposite. Like maybe the Eagles is the team. And everyone's like, whoop, one seed, boom, done. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the growing pains there, right? New, yeah, new players on be. both sides of the ball. I mean, Brady Belichick's such an awesome example of this. But like, even in Buffalo, this is the second year for Dorsey. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's way better than much of the league, as we mentioned. It's the second year for Jacksonville. You know what I mean? Like, they're still sort of fresh. You know, they're right. only in sixth grade. They're not in advanced calculus, you know, in you're Harvard. Yet, right? you know? They might be uh, advancing into junior high, right? Because right, right, right. They're, right. they're not in elementary mean, school, but uh, maybe they're in high junior school, high now. In, in, right. in college in year three and four. So, um, but, th- but think of Kansas City. I mean, like, does anybody even rival them the more I think of this? I guess the no. Rams, the Rams are only a couple years too. You know, I mean, Stafford's mm-hmm. sort of do, but at least he's better out of the block and will even be there, you know. 
the other side of this, Matt, that is not a negative, like for the New York Jets, they're it's, it's, they're doing backflips that they have a new coach, right, 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 right. a new quarterback, right? Like that's mm-hmm. the you know so, um, and we'll see what it looks like in Green Bay, but Atlanta, Pittsburgh, I, I think those teams and fan bases should be excited and are, are glad yeah. they have a new starting quarterback this year, and you know probably crossing their fingers a little bit. Don't know how it's going to look with those, but excited for it. And it's not necessarily a bad thing in every case that it is a change. No doubt. And, you know, always bring back the Steelers. I have major, 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 major concerns about Matt Canada as an offense coordinator. And frankly, I think he was as close to being number 17 on this play caller list as possible. But I think that's the biggest reason they didn't was we don't want to be one of those teams that makes that change. And the second half of the season was better than the first, but he probably has a short leash. You know what I mean? Trust me, Steeler fans were like, ah, get rid of him. You know, you can go down the list of, of past quarterback busts, first round picks that mm-hmm. busted. And almost, almost all of them, new coordinator year two, new coordinator year oh, three. Oh, awful. Like you start with the coordinator, then all of a sudden the whole staff gets fired after year two. And then so year three, it's new head coach and new coordinator. You know, it's just, it's it's nonstop change for these guys, and it's so hard. Your head's spinning as a young player in the NFL anyway, having a new scheme and learn a yeah. new scheme again. And uh, yeah, so they, they just wanted to avoid that. You know what I mean? Steelers are so good with that that I'm sure they kept that in mind as part of it. But uh, you also got to get the right people in too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there are some odd ones like the Browns, and uh, I mean Watson at least has been studying a playbook, but he wasn't in the building, you know, to start the season, obviously. Or, you know, two, what I would say are close to elite quarterbacks and Lamar Jackson and Herbert. Well, they got to do battle with Mahomes and Allen and Burrow and Lawrence in that conference. And their play callers knew. I mean, it's just one little strike against them, you know. And I think, again, those are situations where they're excited about the new play caller. You don't know. You never right. know. But they change play callers to get better. They're not. They right. weren't forced into the situation. It's not like, oh, man, this continuity this is bad. Everything's bad, so we're changing it up. It's like, no, let's make good great. And that happened to 16 teams. I mean, they wouldn't have made a change if they didn't think it's for the better. But six of them will work out. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Eight of them will work out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's Finding which ones work out. But that's an interesting one. If, you, if you're just going to, you know, if you're going to FanDuel, looking at the Vegas lines, and you're thinking, okay, which teams might I want to pick the over on? Mm-hmm. It might be those teams that are getting slept on that do have that continuity. So, so for that reason, yep. maybe bears, giants, Vikings could be those teams where you get a little advantage mm-hmm. um, just because of, of that. Yeah, I think so too. Or, you know, money lines, things like that. Again, early season stuff in particular. And I bet there's some people out there going, I wonder what it is on defense. I don't think it's nearly as big a deal on defense. I just really don't, you know, it's not your, your reactionary position, you know, you're not having to run the play exactly or come to the line and make audibles. And, you know, the communication's not as important. Timing's not as important. You know, of course it matters if you made a defense coordinator change, but I don't think nearly to the degree of offensive play caller quarterback relationship. Yeah. The league's so copycat. And um, by the way, speaking of new shows out there, the, uh, the athletic put out the play callers done by Jordan Rodrigue that talks. Yeah. With- um, you know, a group of play callers. And I just listened to an episode with uh, hearing uh, Robert Sala of the Jets talk about, you know, he's strict Seattle cover three guy and how mm-hmm. everything's kind of merged to cover four. And you're just trying to take away the big plays, the shot plays. And it's such a copycat league. You see Fangio's quarters defense now everywhere. And a lot of teams are trying to do the same thing on offense. And a lot of people coming from the same trees. And so you get a lot of teams on defense trying to do the same thing to shut down those offenses. And it's which teams figure out what that team's doing and how to beat that specific thing. Then you got to figure out how to beat the thing that learn how to beat the other thing. And it's just nonstop in the NFL. And so all, every defense now is almost so multiple that it's hard to even say, like, you can't say the Steelers are three, four, like they used no, to. No, that's stuff right? gone. You know? right. and, and, and base is the new sub anyway. So it's like, how often do you want a nose tackle on the field? It's like the old nickel used to be where it's like, okay, nickel corner is not a starter. Now it is. Nose tackle, he might be on the field on first down, but is he going to get as many snaps as the nickel corner? No, he's not. And this is confusing and will never change. Well, maybe it will, but. Nickel is base, people. You know, like five yes. defensive backs on the field is the most common defensive personnel grouping in the NFL by far. I mean, not to the point where it's the same as three receivers, one tight end, one running back. That's base on offense. You know, I mean, base is 11 on offense. 
and nickel on defense. We just need to stop calling three fours and four threes base. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, uh, and this, Dude, kind I of get that all the time, but like, who's going to play nose for the Steelers? I'm like, that's 10 snaps a game. <laughs> they, they play with two defensive tackles on the field all the time. It's Cam Hayward and to it. It's not Hampton, yeah. you know, or it, it's Fort, funny you know? when the uh, starter comes out and he's a nose tackle and then he leaves after the first play and you don't see him again for the first quarter. Then a Mike he's Hilton a comes in. <laughs> right, right, right. And he plays the whole game. Yep. Uh, and, and then another, to tease a future episode that, that we talked about already, Matt, um, when you look at these scheme changes and you look at how these teams are uh, are playing and defending each other and you know the changeover every year and how scoring is down, I wonder if the zig to the zag right now is teams playing a little bit bigger because the mm-hmm. everyone's practicing being in sub 70% of the time do you get a little bit of an advantage saying, look, I can go multiple on offense, but I can play a little bigger and you don't know which way to go. And if you play big, I can yeah. beat you fast. If you play fast, I can beat you big. So it's funny. Yeah, again, we always question. talk about the Niners and Steelers, but I just wrote an article two days ago that went live today. And basically it was, this was the Steelers snap counts last year. This is how it's going to change with, you know, Sutton gone, Peterson here, new linebackers, blah, blah, blah. But I really referenced your Niners because they're coming here week one. Shanahan, I mean, this is, it's just a good example. It just happens to be our team. The Steelers are a heavy base, sorry to use it, 3 4 team, really low in nickel, really high in dime. Well, Shanahan's going to love that because he's going to have the same five skill guys with a quote fullback out there all the time. You would much rather counter that with nickel. You know, you don't want to be too big, too little. And, that's going to be a major problem for the Steeler defense in week one. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, it's fantastic. So we'll get more into that teams and schemes. Why are team, why is scoring down in the league? If everyone's in sub and throwing the ball more than ever mm-hmm. in the NFL, all that and more coming at you as we get closer to training camp, which starts early for teams like the New York jets on hard knocks. Got you covered every day right here. Peacock and Williamson. <laughs> 